Hi friends, you are welcome in this tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about one of the greatest personalities in English literature. And the very personality here for our discussion is John Milton. So this tutorial will be a short biographical sketch of John Milton and we will think about how John Milton became so great a literary giant in this uh, world of literature. So friends, let's start this tutorial with a uh, with some lines of poems composed by William Wordsworth. Actually, it is a sonnet on Milton and the very lines uh, in which uh, Wordsworth talks are Thy soul was like a star and dwelt apart. Thou hadst a voice whose sound was like the sea. Pure as the naked heavens, majestic, free. So didst thou travel on life's common way. In cheerful goodliness and yet thy heart the lowliest duties of herself did lay. So friends, in these lines, Wordsworth praises John Milton for his composition and as a fine personality in literature. He compares John Milton with the pure soul. He compares John Milton with the actions of God. He compares John Milton with the sea. Here we have like a voice whose sound was like a sea. So this is the greatness of John Milton. And many poets and critics and scholars have hailed John Milton for the composition, for the best composition in English literature because he was the most discussed uh, literary person, most discussed poet after Shakespeare. If we uh, go in the history of English literature, we find that. And here we have again a remark of uh, William J. Long regarding Shakespeare and uh, John Milton. What did William J. Long say about John Milton in the English literature? It's a book on history. So let me read the words of W. J. Long. He says, Shakespeare and Milton are the two figures that tower conspicuously above the goodly fellowship of men who have made our literature famous. Milton is the poet of steadfast will and purpose, who moves like a god amid the fears and hopes and changing impulses of the world, regarding them as trivial and momentary things that can never swear our great soul from its course. So this is the remark by William J. Long. In this remark he compares William Shakespeare and John Milton and he has given a very special quality of John Milton that the composition of John Milton or the literature of John Milton or the poems of John Milton expresses a kind of impulse and this is universal and this impulse is found in any uh, literature which uh, John Milton composes. So this is the greatness of John Milton and like Shakespeare, he was again a very popular poet in English literature. So friends, uh, here let's know about John Milton's biographical information. John Milton was born in a well-to-do family and his father was a very good businessman who could earn uh, for his family and they have a very uh, honest and sincere family as it is stated in uh, John Milton and uh, here we have John Milton's own words and this has been stated in Milton's essay called Second Defense of the English People and here is the quotation I was born in London of an honest family my father destined me from a child to the pursuits of literature and my appetite from knowledge was so voracious that from 12 years of age I hardly ever left my studies or went to bed before midnight. Now, it is the very clear picture of John Milton's upbringing. How did he grow up? So, we find here in this line. So, his family was a decent and from his childhood, he was a voracious reader and he took interest in studies because the very atmosphere of the family of John Milton was uh, that of uh, there was music, art and literature. His family was fond of, his father and mother uh, was fond of uh, music, arts and literature and the same legacy has been forwarded by uh, John Milton and he took interest in studying literature, studying theology, studying philosophy, in studying different kinds of sciences, for example mathematics and other related genres of literature and other fields. So this is the very legacy. But friends, here it was not a so simple life as uh, John Milton here states in these uh, lines in his essay because the very uh, difficulties came after he became a, an active participant in the 
uh, in that particular age and the age of john milton is filled with turmoil it was filled with uh, the struggle between government or the king and the people so uh, the situation uh, in the period of john milton was very grim and he was the product of that age because in 1642 the civil wars broke out and he was uh, the very advocate of liberty and he defended free speech and liberty and he took a stand against the very tyrannical forces working there the king charles the first and many people or the subjects of king charles the first was against his uh, tyrannical rule and they revolted against the government and he participated on behalf of the uh, people of the country actually he was on a tour to italy and france and there he uh, got the news that there is a crisis began in england and in 1640 he returned to london and from there uh, we can say that he started his political life and in that political life we find that he composed so many uh, leaflets or tracts and uh, Oh, essays and pamphlets and he became full-time pamphleteer in those days and after the execution of King Charles I in 1649 this uh, participa participation has gained him popularity among people and uh, he became an established politician as well as a literary person in England or in London and then he started his uh, life as a uh, full-time author or we can say that as a uh, full-time uh, he found his career from the participation in the struggle against king charles the first time bishop we can understand that john milton was a very sensitive person and he was fond of the liberty and free speech and he uh, struggled uh, and he fought against the king charles the first time some of the authority of church and friends again there are so many turning points in the life of john milton and here uh, we find that he had to marry three times because when he married first time to Mary Powell in uh, 1642, she died in 1652 and again uh, second time he had to marry with Catherine Woodcock in uh, 1656 and again she died in 1658 uh, and uh, third time he married to uh, Elizabeth Minchel in 1663. So he had to marry three times and uh, all the three times uh, he uh, faced some difficulties in his marriage, married life and hence he also composed some of the essays on this uh, marriage life and pamphlets uh, we find in his uh, famous works. So friends again his real difficulties came uh, in 1660 onwards because King Charles II, the father, uh, son of executed uh, King Charles I came on throne in 1660 and uh, he started imprisoning many people, many uh, high profile uh, politicians in the country who uh, went against the very will or wish of uh, king or the authority and in that uh, uh, leaders John Milton was one of and he has been imprisoned for some days and he, he was thrown into jail and uh, from this time the very difficulty and started again these difficulties has added when he became completely or totally blind in 1652 but still his writing was continued and we find that in his blindness he composed one of the finest epics in the world we can say that in english literature so here uh, let's think again some of the uh, points which are significant in the life of john milton so uh, he was the master of many languages he was master of english he was master of hebrew he very versed in the language of uh, latin and again uh, he learned some of the languages uh, where he visited for example france and uh, again he wanted to visit uh, greece but uh, he could not visit greeks due to the crisis began in england and, and his participation in the struggle and revolt uh, against the authority has yielded some uh, good results for him and he became uh, the secretary for foreign terms um, by, by the state council and uh, he got the reputation as a civil servant there and at the last days of his life he retired at the outskirts uh, of London and there he composed his uh, finest poems uh, 
he composed uh, in total blindness uh, the very paradise lost samson agonistes and uh, uh, paradise regained which uh, were hailed as uh, the greatest works in the english literature so friends here i have listed some of his uh, best works or some of his uh, works for our understanding and uh, here the very first is on the morning of christ's nativity it is a poem uh, written in 1629 then we have listed as a pastoral elegy uh, written in 1637 then we have paradise lost an epic poem in blank verse written in 1667 then we have paradise regained 1671 and samson agonistic a tragic drama he composed in 1671 and uh, uh, he peacefully died in london in 1674 uh, in the month of november so friends here uh, we have one of the remarkable quotations from john milton's paradise lost and let me read this quotation so that uh, we can understand the depth of his writing and uh, the greatness of john milton here is the quotation it is better to rule in hell than to serve in heaven now in this couplet he has given the very philosophy of his life that he wanted liberty that he wanted freedom that he is in favor of free speech and here he says that it is better to rule in hell but uh, the very meaning of this line is that i am satisfied with uh, the position which i got here on this earth or if this position is of a ruler i am very satisfied with the ruler and i am not satisfied serving in the heaven is the very uh, meaning here so the thing is very simple he had self respect and this lines expresses the self respect of a human being we should be uh, self respect and uh, this very thing is stated here in this quotation so friend this is the brief biography of john milton so friends thank you very much for watching this biographical note on john milton if you have anything to share with me please comment in the comment box i will try to connect uh, uh, through this comment and uh, please like this video share this video and subscribe to literature simply so that uh, you can get uh, these kind of videos uh, on the channel and also press the bell notification icon for the notifications